Hi, I'm Ross Bolton. Welcome to my funk rhythm guitar video. You know, the word funk gets used a lot to describe all sorts of music, but uh, the true funk music period began in the 60s with a guy named James Brown and his musicians. And then it uh, evolved through the 70s and then kind of faded away in the late 70s when disco became popular. But you know, during that time, there were a lot of bands playing some incredible grooves. And one of the great things that emerged out of that time was an innovative style of rhythm guitar playing that we're going to talk about today. The difference between funk rhythm guitar playing and other guitar playing of that period is that instead of the emphasis being on the, you know, long extended solos and uh, guitar, heavy guitar riff type tunes, the idea with funk rhythm guitar is to find a part that blends in with the rhythm section, almost making your part invisible, but adding to the whole of the groove. So we're going to try to capture the essence of that in this video. Uh, we're going to start with basic techniques. We'll do a lot of different guitar parts that uh, uh, show contemporary styles and traditional styles as well. We'll start out simple and we'll get really advanced. But basically, we're just going to turn you into a burning, churning funk rhythm machine. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you get a lot out of it. Let's get started and tuned up. Here's an E. Here's the B. G. D. A. And finally, a low E. OK, before we go on and talk about basic technique, let me mention one thing. And that's that you need to develop a good internal sense of time. And one of the best ways I can think of to do that is every time you sit down to play or practice, you need to practice with a, a metronome or a drum machine. And if you have a drum machine, set it up to a basic pattern like this one, where the bass drum's on one and three, the snare's on two and four, and the hi-hat's just hitting uh, straight eighth notes. Now the reason for that is you're going to be playing 16th note patterns. Some of them are going to get quite complicated. And whether you're playing straight 16ths or swing 16ths, a simple pattern like that won't get in your way. Now speaking of 16th notes, most funk music is based on a 16th note subdivision. Now what that means for us as guitar players is we're going to be scratching with our right hand constant 16th notes. Now that's two up and two down strokes for every beat of music. We start with a downstroke. Now when I count, you'll notice I'll have a downstroke lining up with a count like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now I know that looks very simple, but there's a lot of little things about that you need to know. So let's start with some basic right hand technique. OK, the key word here is loose. Everything should be loose. Your arm is loose, your wrist is loose, your hand is loose. I call it having a drunk wrist. Um, and the exaggerated hand motion is, is kind of like you're trying to shake water off the end of your hand. Now, you'll notice through the video when I play, I, I keep my fingers uh, kind of dangling loosely here. You may uh, have your fingers cupped in like that. That's OK. Either way is fine, as long as you don't have anything fixed to the guitar, like your fingers fixed to the uh, pick guard or your wrist fixed to the bridge. You don't want that. You want a full, full uh, floating motion with your hand over the, the top of the guitar. The only tension at all is just enough to hold the pick uh, in place. And um, speaking of that, a lot of my students at GIT, when they first start this um, uh, technique, this funk technique, uh, a lot of them complain about the pick slipping around either one way or another. Um, and I find that the most uh, common reason for that is that they don't have the pick flat to the strings. If you're stroking the guitar, uh, and your pick isn't flat to the strings. If you have an angle, it's going to slip this way. Or if you angle it that way, it's going to slip the other way. Keep your pick flat to the strings. And the last thing I'd like to mention is uh, one of the most uh, common uh, problems uh, for having a good sound is that people drag their pick across the strings. When you're uh, playing this kind of music, you want a tight sound. If you drag your pick, tends to sound sloppy. So uh, hit the strings as if, almost as if you're uh, hitting them all simultaneously.
Before we go on, let me show you this chord. It's an E dominant ninth chord. It's the mother of all funk chords. Uh, and it's also the foundation for most of what we'll be doing in the first, uh, first section of this video. Uh, here on the seventh fret, we're playing an E with our second finger, a G sharp with our first finger, and then with our third finger, we're barring the top three strings all in the seventh fret to complete the chord. It sounds like that. Now, while I got you here, let's just mention a couple things about left hand technique. The whole thing here is to be efficient. You want the minimum amount of movement necessary to, to, to get the job done. Your left hand uh, controls the articulation, that is, which note is played when, just by squeezing down and then raising up just enough to mute. That's all the movement you need. You don't need to be flailing around all over the place, especially when the, uh, the rhythm parts get complicated. The last thing is, is that um, the left hand controls uh, the length of the note, too. Just by bouncing your hand, how long you hold it down. Now this is true whether you're playing chords or uh, single notes. And you'll see throughout the video that this is really a necessary technique to have together. Now that we've talked about the techniques for each of the hands, let's take each one of these 16th notes and isolate them. This is going to be crucial for you to play uh, more complicated parts later. Isolating these sixteenths is the basis for all of your funk guitar playing. So if we get the drum machine going and we start scratching our sixteenth notes in time, so we know there's four sixteenths per beat of music. There's two downstrokes and two upstrokes. Let's start with the first downstroke. It's called the downbeat. One, two, three, four. This is probably the easiest one. It lines up with the bass and the snare. It's a downstroke. The next downstroke is called the upbeat. It's the third sixteenth, and it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Now let's go on to the upstrokes. There's two upstrokes, the second and the fourth sixteenth. Now our tendency is to rush these a little bit. Here's the second one. One, two, three, four. One. Now the fourth sixteenth is probably the most difficult one. It sounds like this. Two, three, four. Notice it falls right before the drums. Now, at this point, you may want to stop the tape and practice these on your own. Because, like I said, these are the building blocks for building the other guitar parts. So if you're ready, let's combine a few of these attacks into a classic, uh, traditional sort of rhythm guitar part. One, two, three. Now, the cool thing about this guitar part, we'll call this our, um, our basic JB part in, in honor of James Brown. The cool thing about this guitar part is that it takes all four of those attacks and spreads them out over a bar to make a very cool rhythm pattern. Let's go in and take a little closer look at this at a slower tempo. Let's start scratching with our right hand. Line up with the drums. Before we play the part, make sure with your left hand you squeeze nice short attacks. Keep the sound tight. Your right hand is loose, flat against the strings. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's take it up tempo now. Two, one, two, three, four.
our next rhythm example, we're going to go down two frets and play a D9. This part also has all four sixteenths spread out through the bar, like the last example. One, two, three. Now let's slow it down and take a closer look. We start with two downstrokes followed by two upstrokes. Let's just start there. Two, three, four. Down, down, up, up. Now we'll add the last attack. It's an upstroke, right? Don't rush this last one. Okay, let's take it up tempo now. One, two, three, four. Before we go on, there's a couple of things I want to mention. The first thing is about controlling the scratch with your right hand. Now, this last part you played, you may have played it scratching the whole way through, and it sounds like this. Now, that's okay if you're starting to learn the, uh, the technique for the first time. That's, uh, it's a little easier to learn how to uh, keep your time constant by scratching. But as you go on and you develop as a player and you play the examples in the video, you want to be able to play it without the scratch as well. So uh, I'll play the same part now without scratching, but notice I keep my right hand moving the whole time to keep my time together. So that's something to be conscious of as you go through the whole video. One other thing, about playing funk guitar, it, the tone is really important, and the tone begins with your hands. Now, the guitar you use and the amp you use and the effects and all that are important, but tone begins right here. Don't be meek. This kind of music isn't for the timid. When you practice, practice aggressively. Practice like you mean it. Because when you get out and you play in real life, you're going to play the way that you practiced. Okay? So keep your tone strong. Now, let's go on. We talked a lot about 16ths up till now. And there's basically two ways to feel the 16th note. Uh, a straight uh, 16th, which is the way we've been playing up till now. But the other way that we're going to talk about is a swing 16th, and that's a, like a hip hop feel or a new jack swing or whatever they're going to call it this next year. Uh, if I scratch 16ths with a drum machine like this, these are straight 16ths. Everything's even. This is the way we've been playing up till now. But if I make one attack longer and one a little shorter, it sounds like this. Now you can exaggerate the swing, but it's best to just put it right about here. This is comfortable and this will groove well with music. Now once again, straight and swing. So now we're going to take the first part that we played, the, we called it the basic JB part, and we're going to play that with this uh, swing 16th feel and it'll sound a lot like this. Two, three, four, down. Play along, down. Up, down, up, down, down, up, down. Up. One more time. Okay, now let's play it with the rhythm section. One, two, three, four. For 
our next example, we're going to move up one fret to F9. And this part uh, resembles the other part that we just played, but we've added a couple of attacks, make it a little bit hipper, and it sounds like this. Two, three, four. So let's slow it down and move in a little closer and take a look. Okay, start scratching in a swing feel. One, two, three, four. Alright, let's swing this one with the bass and the drums. One, two, three, four. Up to now, we've been playing uh, rhythm parts that have short attacks, but now let's uh, play a rhythm part that has a little bit longer uh, uh, tone with the left hand. Now, the way we do that is we hold down with our left hand and float our right hand to get the longer tones. Kind of sounds like this. So, for example, let's break it down a little bit. Let's start by just playing four sixteenths uh, in a row like this. We're going to take the same idea. We're going to hold down our left hand. After we play the first attack, we're going to float our hand a couple of sixteenths and then hit an upstroke. And it'll sound like this. Now let's play a rhythm part that uses that figure. Uh, we're up here in G9, if you hadn't noticed, on the 10th fret. And the part will sound like this. One, two, one, two, three, one. Okay, let's slow it down a little bit and take a closer look. Let's just start scratching now. Now at the beginning of the part, there's that long tone, and you're going to want to stop your hand, but keep it moving. Two, three, four. Up, down, double. OK, here we go with the bass and the drums. One, two, three, four. Something I'm sure you're all aware of, but maybe never looked at on its own, is a little thing called a half-step slide, and it's an important component to most funk guitar parts. Maybe sounds like this. Now on its own, we're right here, here in E9 on the seventh fret. We're going to approach it from a half-step below, uh, E-flat, and on its own sounds like this. We're floating the right hand on the second sixteenth. That's where we make the slide. It's important to slide in time on the upbeat.
That's the basic slide. Now, there's three kind of common ways that this is used in the uh, context of a rhythm part. Uh, let's play one beat pattern. The first one is the slide holding the left hand down and floating the right hand, and it sounds like this. Now, if we uh, uh, bring the right hand down and scratch the whole way, it sounds like this. Now, if we raise the left hand on the third sixteenth, we get a little more syncopated sound like this. Now, you may want to stop the tape and check these out on your own. Now, up to this point, we've only been using this one voicing of a ninth chord. In the next section after this, uh, we're going to be going over a lot of different uh, shapes for uh, funk chords. So hang in there. Believe me, we're going to play more than just this. And if you've had a lot of experience uh, playing this type of music before, uh, I realize these are all basic uh, fundamentals we're going over now. But uh, just like basketball players do, you need to look at your fundamentals regularly. Okay. Uh, now let's go on, and we'll use this floated right hand and the half-step slide, and we'll put it into some rhythm guitar parts. This first one is an E9. What a surprise. Uh, it's a little faster. It's got a swing feel, and it's uh, got a slide in it. It's kind of based on the original JB part that we played at the beginning of the tape. Here it goes. Two, one, two, three. Okay, let's slow it down and take a little closer look. Okay, start swinging. One, two, three, four. Okay, now you're ready to play with the band. Two, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's move down the neck to the third fret. This is based off of a C9. There's a couple of half-step slides in this. It's a straight feel. Sounds like this. Two. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's slow it down and take a look. Remember, it's a straight feel. One, two, three, four. Slide, up, slide. OK, let's go up tempo. Okay, let's move up to D9 now. 
Uh, this is also a straight feel. This one is a little different. It starts on the end of one rather than on the downbeat. And it has a long tone uh, with a slide in it as well. Sounds like this. Two, three, four. Okay, let's slow it down. You want to keep track of where one is. Two, three, four, one. 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 Okay, let's take it up tempo now. One, two, three, four. Okay, for this last example of this section, we're going to move back up to E. Now, this one's going to be a little bit faster, so I'm going to demo it just a little bit below where you're going to end up playing it. There's a couple of slides in this, and here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's slow this down. There's a slide right at the beginning on beat one and on beat four. If you're ready, this one's kind of fast. Let's play it with a band. Two, one, two, three, four. Okay, we've been talking about basic technique with the right and the left hand and getting them to play together. Now let's go on and let's talk about some uh, chord voicings. Now when I say chord voicing, I mean the order of the tones from the scale in which the chord appears on the guitar. But uh, you need to have a good understanding of the fretboard, and that starts from knowing a few different chord shapes. Now the ones that I'm going to show you, and are they not all the possible chord shapes on the guitar, these are just practical common funk uh, chords on the top four or five strings of the guitar. Now remember also, uh, these are movable shapes, so that when you learn one of these uh, patterns from the chords that I show you, uh, feel free to move it around into other keys. Okay, now most funk music comes from one of two families, harmonically speaking, either dominant, which is a blues sounding harmony, or minor. There are also some in major keys, but the two biggest areas are dominant and minor, and those are the ones we're gonna cover in the video. Now we're going to start with the dominant family. Now when I say dominant, I'm referring to a seventh chord family that derives itself from having the root tone, that's the first uh, note of the scale, the third, the third tone, the fifth, and a lowered seventh. Okay, that's the basis of this harmony. Now let's go onto the guitar and see all the different voicings we can come up with. If we start here in third position on the third fret, this is our first voicing. We're in the key of G now, it's a G7, and G is our root, it's on top. Let's go up to the next inversion. Now we're still on the top four strings, and now we have the third on top, and G is on the bottom, our root is on the bottom. The next chord, the next inversion, has the fifth on top. It's also a G7. This is one of my favorites, I got this from a Sly Stone record. Uh, 
the G is kind of hidden here on the B string, so your landmark is here on top. And then right here in the same position is the G9. And then again in the same position is another G7 right here. We're going to put the 7 on top. And then the last chord, another one of my favorites, is this G9 with the root on top. Now if some of these shapes are new to you, you might want to look through the book and get familiar with them. Now let's connect them with a scale on top, the dominant scale uh, more commonly referred to as the Mixolydian mode. And if we connect them, we get all the uh, extensions like this. One more time. Now we're going to play a few rhythm parts using some of the chord voicings we just talked about. We'll still be in the key of G. This first one is like something you might have heard on an early Cool in the Gang record or a Sly Stone record. It uses this chord right here uh, with a fifth on top. I think it was the third chord that we went over. And it also uses this G9, our old friend. We put our little finger up here on the 12th fret. That's the 13th, so now we have is a dominant 13 chord. Okay, the part has a slight little swing to it and goes like this. Three, four. Now let's play it a little slower. Start scratching the swing. Go down one fret and then back like this like that, but you're scratching the whole time. Down, 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 up. Down, 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 up. All right, let's lay it out with the rhythm section. One, two, three, four. All right, this one's a little more up-tempo. It still has a slight swing feel to it. Uh, we're going to use two chords. First, this G9 high on the neck here. This is the last chord we talked about. The other chord is this G7. And again, we're going to put our little finger on the 13th fret. But during the course of the part, we're going to take it off. You'll hear that. Um, this is something you might have heard maybe on an early Prince record. Here, it goes like this. Three, four. Play it a little bit slower. One, two, three, four. Down, down, slide. Lift your little finger. One more time. Okay, let's take it up tempo now. One, two, three, four.
Okay, this example is a bit slower. We're going to move down into fifth position. We're going to play this G7 chord right here. This is the uh, second voicing we talked about. Remember, it has the third on top and the, the root at the bottom. And our only move in this pattern is to take our little finger and move it up one fret to the fourth. That's the, called a uh, dominant seven with a suspended fourth. This is a pretty common move in uh, a lot of uh, funk rhythm guitar patterns. Uh, now our tendency here, because of the nature of the part I'm going to play, is to stop your right hand uh, when we go up to that sus4. Now when you hear the pattern, be conscious of that because you want to keep your hand moving the whole time. Um, let me play it a couple times and then you join in. One, two, three, four. Straight sixteenths. Let's add bass and see how it sounds. One, two, three, four. Now, a common dilemma for rhythm guitar players is what do you do when you're vamping on one chord for a long period of time? It can get boring, and how do you keep the part interesting? Well, there's a lot you can do. Uh, for instance, if I'm just playing on this E9, uh, what can I do? Well, it's a couple of things. Okay, now I'm just doing little things like slides, chord fragments, different voicings to keep the part interesting. Now, there's a, that's a lot more than you would do when you were playing a song, but it gives you an idea of your options. Now, the first part I'm going to play, or the next couple parts I'll play, I'll be using the E9 chord with some chord fragments. The first chord fragment, or interval, is this tritone. When I say tritone, it's the interval of a flatted fifth, and the two notes that I'm using are the flat seven, and the third from an E7 chord. That's a D and a G sharp. And I'll be moving into that from a half step below. The part sounds like this. Three, four. OK. So let's play it a little bit slower and take another look at it. It's sliding and in the interval. Three, four, slide. Those are two upstrokes. Straight feel. Great. Now to that part, we're going to add uh, the same interval. Only we're going to take this upper note, the G sharp, <clears throat> and play it an octave lower down here. We'll keep the D the same. So we play that part, and then we add two downstrokes, and that part sounds like this. Three, four. Up, up, down, down. One more. OK, now let's play the whole part with the rhythm section. One, two, three, four. Now let's do the exact same part with a swing feel. One, two, three, four.
Okay, for this example, let's move from E9, go over to A7, and we'll play a two-bar example. Sounds like this. It's a straight feel. One, two, three, four. Now let's break this down. This rhythm pattern is based around this A7 chord voicing right here. It's the same as the first chord that we went over, but it was down in G then. Okay, the, really the pattern starts here by uh, barring the first four strings with our index finger, and then hammering on with our second finger to the uh, major third. The next move is to take our third finger and bar the second, third, and fourth strings on the seventh fret, and then go back and hammer again. So it sounds like this. The next part of this pattern is uh, based around this chord voicing. It's the second one we talked about. It has the third on top. But we're just going to play the top three strings, so we'll move our fingers around and play, uh, play this chord shape with our first, second, and third fingers. Now we just slide into that chord. So the whole first bar sounds like this. The second bar is identical, except that instead of just a simple slide, with this chord voicing, we actually float the right hand and use that one rhythm pattern we talked about. Let's play the whole pattern slowly now. One, two, three, four. time. All right, let's do it up. One, two, three, four. As you recall earlier, I said that most funk tunes fall into one of two categories, either dominance, uh, dominant harmony, or minor harmony. Now, we've been talking about dominance. Let's shift over and talk about the minor chords now. Now, the only difference between a dominant seventh chord and a minor seventh chord is the third. Okay, you have a lowered third in a minor seventh chord. So, the chord, a minor seventh chord would be spelled the root, the root of the scale, the lowered third, the flatted third, the fifth of the scale, and the flatted seventh. That would be a minor seventh chord. So now let's go and look at the dominant chords that we played. When we'll lower the third, and we'll create a whole new set of minor chord voicings. You'll remember the first chord we played in the dominant section was this chord. The third is here on the G string, and we need to lower that to make it a minor seven. So we take our finger off, and that's the world's easiest chord to play. That's a G minor seven. Go up to the next inversion. That was this was the next one in the dominant family. Now the third's on top. Then we need to lower it one fret, so we'll just bar here with our second finger. And we have a minor seven. The next chord was this one. Now here the third is on the bottom on the D string, so we'll just lower that. We'll bar with our first finger. And now we have a minor seven chord there. In the same position we had this G9. Now the third is here, same, same note. We lower that, simply just bring it down one fret. There it is. The next voicing was this. Now let's lower the third, it was here on the B string. And we'll put the seven on top like we did before. The last chord is the only one that doesn't work by comparison. But this G9, if we lower the third, which is on the B string, it's kind of a tense sounding chord, so we're going to play a G minor 7 like this. It's a little easier to play. Take our little finger, maybe you'll use your third, but I'd use my little finger. 
Now if we connect these using the extensions, we'll play a scale in the top voice like we did in the dominant section. I'm going to use the Dorian scale. Now, that's the note that makes it Dorian. We want the major six with the minor chord. That's a common funk move. And then, moving on, one more time. Okay, for our first example in this minor chord section, we're going to play a, a part that's a little up-tempo, has a little swing feel to it, and we're going to play it in two different places on the neck. It's the same part in two different octaves. And here we go. Two, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's break this down. We'll begin by using this chord, the G minor. It's the first one we spoke of, but I'm going to add my third finger here and play the root in the bass. Now the move here is with your little finger, you place it on the fifth fret playing an E, that's a major sixth over this minor chord, or 13, and then you move it up another fret to the minor seven. Now we're going to play the same sound up here in the 10th fret, this minor 7 chord. We'll put our little finger here on the 12th fret, and then on the 13th fret. All together it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four. Go up high here. All right, now let's play it up tempo with the rhythm section. Remember, we're playing it four times low and then four times high. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Move it up. Okay, here's another two bar example. It's got a straight feel. It sounds a lot like this. Two, 